Hi there, my name is Thaddeus Golden. I'm an FAE with Tau Glass, and uh, today I want to talk to you about RTK. So RTK is a differential GNSS technology um, that uh, uses two receivers uh, to uh, basically get a much, much more accurate position than a, a standalone receiver could. Uh, one receiver is at a known point in space, uh, so, so it's probably been surveyed um, and uh, when you know exactly where it is, um, you can basically correct out the, the deviations in your, uh, in your received GPS position at that point uh, and send that information to another receiver that is in the same, same vicinity because the, the primary uh, contribution to these, these uncertainties in your position are actually caused by the atmosphere. And so if uh, two receivers are within a couple kilometers of each other, uh, those, those atmospheric deviations are very similar. And so that's, uh, that's what allows this to work. But uh, um, uh, compared to a standalone receiver where you might be getting uh, uh, two, three, or four meters of accuracy, with RTK, with very good antennas, you can get down to half a centimeter of accuracy, which uh, um, is going to enable you know, applications like uh, autonomous vehicles or autonomous agriculture, um, you know, a, a commercial site survey, anything where you need that very high resolution. Um, we've been doing some testing to uh, determine which of our antennas are, are really uh, uh, best cut out for RTK. And so we've been uh, um, playing with the Neo M8E, uh, that is the uh, new RTK uh, receiver from Ublox. It's got RTK built in using the RTCM protocol, which is a standard RTK protocol. And uh, um, basically what it allows you to do is it spits out a, uh, a bit of information uh, every now and again that uh, um, you can send over some link, be it cellular or uh, ISM or Wi-Fi, um, doesn't matter, just uh, any way you want to connect these two receivers um, moving about. Uh, but, you know, like I said, you need an appropriate antenna for this. So what makes an RTK antenna an RTK antenna? Well, uh, our findings are that uh, you need an antenna that can see a lot of satellites very strongly. I know, not, not a huge surprise there, but uh, um, there are some certain signal characteristics that uh, uh, play into an antenna's ability to do so. Uh, so in order for RTK to work well, you need at least six satellites of one constellation or uh, seven satellites of multiple constellations. It's just uh, the, the, the way uh, the, the calculations work. But uh, um, generally speaking, uh, in one constellation, you're, you're only likely to see, you know, five or six at a time. And so um, having, having the view of multiple uh, GNSS constellations um, really becomes critical for this to, to work robustly and work frequently. Um, so you need a, a wide bandwidth uh, to do multiple uh, constellations because they, they work at different frequencies. Um, you also need a wide gain pattern uh, that uh, has a, a very strong gain toward the sky and down toward the horizon in order to, to cast the net wide and be able to see uh, as, as, as many of these satellite vehicles as possible. You can think of the low elevation gain as like your peripheral vision, uh, where uh, you know if you, you can't see well out of your peripherals, um, you're not going to see as many satellites as you might otherwise be able to see. Um, you also need to have a, a fairly strong passive gain because the way the uh, RTK calculation works is that it looks at the phase of the carrier signal. And uh, uh, in order to, to know that phase well, in order to resolve it, um, you uh, need to have a strong signal because the, the, the stronger the signal is, the lower the relative phase noise is. Um, so to that end, uh, we have uh, basically selected two antennas and uh, uh, pit them against each other, 
One is uh, our 18 millimeter active patch. Um, it's a, a small integrated patch module. It's got the, the LNA electronics on board um, and uh, sits on its own little ground plane. Um, these are great for standalone applications, uh, you know, be it asset tracking or fleet management. Um, they, uh, they, they work really well for, for those uh, uh, lower precision kind of applications. Um, but they do have limitations. So the, the gain uh, upward is not quite as strong. You can see it on the pattern here that it tops at about zero dBi gain. Um, it also uh, uh, dimples a little bit around the horizon. So there, there's going to be pockets of lower gain um, in that angle space uh, uh, toward the horizon, which uh, will limit the antenna's ability to see low horizon satellites. Um, also, because it's you know uh, uh, a bit lower gain uh, due to that small ground plane, um, it uh, limits the dyna dynamic range of any single satellite link, and so uh, you might not have the dynamic range you need to make that calculation successfully. On the other hand, we have AQHA.11. Um, this is a physically larger antenna, but uh, it uh, is one of our highest grade antennas for L1 applications. Um, it's a quadrifilar helical antenna, so that means uh, um, you have very good gain uh, both upward and outward. Um, you, uh, it's a peak gain of about uh, um, 2.5 to 3 dBi straight up, and then uh, um, a little bit closer to uh, 0 dBi toward the horizon. But it's very even, and there's, very, there's really no dimpling around that, uh, around that angle space toward the horizon. It's very, very uh, a flat gain pattern. Um, it's also uh, ground plane independent, so you don't need a large ground plane in order for it to work well. It just, just you know, set it and forget it, pretty much. Um, so, uh, how did these antennas do compared to one another? Well, we, we uh, uh, put them in the, the same environment, um, hooked them up to the same uh, reference station for, for the RTK. And uh, um, we looked at deviations in X and Y in position. Um, we looked at uh, deviations in signal strength over elevation, so if go from, from straight up down to the horizon. And uh, we also looked at the uh, percentage of successful RTK calculations, uh, which you know is driven by that uh, the dynamic range. And here's what we found. So uh, the, the AQHA 11. Um, actually was able to, to get a hard fix 100% of the time. Uh, so uh, it had the, the, uh, uh, very, it had the least uncertainty uh, possible in, in an RTK uh, kind of application. Um, the, the smaller patch, um, it, uh, it was able to uh, resolve calculations about 36% of the time, um, but uh, was not able to get a clear fix and uh, the remainder of the time, it uh, uh, wasn't able to, to uh, resolve any, uh, any calculations at all. Uh, so looking at the uh, X and Y deviation, we see you know, up to 5 meters of deviation uh, on the, uh, the, the smaller patch, uh, which is you know, about analogous to what it would be in a standalone kind of application. Uh, the AQHA, on the other hand, uh, was uh, below two centimeters in deviation. So, you know, very, very accurate, uh, um, perfectly suitable for, for autonomous vehicles or, or high-resolution geofencing, um, anything where you need that, uh, that very uh, low deviation in position. Um, and you can see here from the, uh, uh, the signal strength maps that uh, um, they're... There's a much more consistent uh, signal to noise ratio across that angle space for the, the AQHA 11, which is driving its ability to uh, uh, do the things in the last two slides. Um, the uh, you know the horizontal uh, is the the elevation, so that's uh, going to be the consistency from from straight up at the far right to down to the horizon at the far left. Um, also vertically, uh, that's going to tell you uh, how how uh, uh, consistent the signal strength is, you know, going around that, uh, that upward axis. And so we see that it's uh, uh, fairly flat with uh, uh, fairly little deviation 
um, in both uh, uh, GPS and GLONASS and uh, uh, has nice strong gain all the way down to about 30 degrees off the horizon. Uh, the patch, on the other hand, um, it's, uh, it's a little bit bandwidth limited, so uh, um, it didn't do quite as well at GLONASS as it did at GPS. Uh, but around that, around that angle space, around the axis, straight up, um, there was quite a bit of deviation in the signal strength. Uh, you can see a very wide vertical spread, and so uh, um, that that tells you that uh, some of the some of the pockets around that uh, um, around that pattern uh, are uh, hurting the signal noise ratio. But yeah, so uh, um, that's that's kind of the summary. Um, now, you know the the kind of uh, pattern characteristics you need uh, for RTK are also available in a, a patch antenna. It's just that typically you need a, a larger patch with a little bit more bandwidth and also a larger ground plane to get the best, uh, uh, the best performance out of that patch possible. Um, but uh, uh, for, for RTK, you definitely want the, the even gain pattern, wide beam width, and multi-constellation support for it to work the best. Um, and that's gonna be you know, just a, a fundamentally superior uh, positioning experience to uh, the standalone kind of architecture. But you do need that, that extra uh, well-known reference in order for it to work. Um, if you have any questions about uh, RTK, uh, about which of our antennas will be suited for RTK, or any other questions about GNSS, uh, feel, please, please feel free to reach out. Um, you can uh, reach us at uh, customer service at tileglass.com, or just go right to the website, tileglass.com, for more information. Thanks a lot, and have a good day.